adding. When you're adding two numbers, it really depends if they have decimals or not, but you're lining things up based on their tens, right? Based on their position, right? So let's say we're adding two, five, seven, six, plus seven, four, two, right? I'm covering, I know you said adding you're okay with, but subtracting is just adding negative numbers. So we'll cover adding and then we'll flip it for the subtracting, right? If you're adding these two numbers, then what you do, this is the one positions, the tens, the hundreds, the thousands, you line them up according to their position, right? So if you're gonna add these two numbers, you go two, five, seven, six, and that's the two, four, seven, right? Four, uh, seven, four, two, you line them up. When you're adding them, you add. Six plus two is eight, seven plus four is 11. If you get anything over a nine, you gotta carry over to the next level because that's 10 plus right so four uh, and seven is eleven you put the one here and the ten goes up here and then you got six and seven is thirteen you put one here three so that's adding them now what if you had decimals in this right what if this was two five point seven six plus seven four point two right same digits but a decimal added all right then what you're really doing is you're adding based on the decimal, you're lining up the decimal, because that is exactly what you were doing here, right? You're lining up based on the decimal, but the decimal is invisible because we don't have anything past the decimal, right? So the decimal for these guys is here and here and here and here, right? So we're lining up on the decimal. So if you're doing this, then you line them up, 0.76 plus 74.2, right? Now, anything in the decimal that you don't have numbers for, like this goes two decimal places. This only has one decimal place. So what you have here is really just a zero. Okay, you, it's an invisible zero. So all you do, you go six plus zero is six. Seven plus two is nine. Place your decimal place there, right? Nine, uh, uh, five plus four is nine. Two plus seven is nine. Wow, cool number. 99.96 easy peasy right let's do subtracting subtracting so let's assume we're subtracting these two numbers again two five seven six um, minus seven four two okay so again you line them up based on the decimal the invisible decimal that we had here is also present here right because these are the single digits these are the tens right the hundreds and the thousands right so when you're subtracting you want to line it up with the higher number the bigger number up top right with adding it doesn't make a difference with subtracting it does you want the bigger number up top two five seven six and you're going to subtract seven four two right and what you do is you go six minus two is four seven minus seven minus six minus two is four seven minus four is three and then you're going to go five minus seven but you can't take seven away from five right so whenever you're subtracting when the above number right is smaller than the lower number whatever you're taking away from the above number what you end up doing you borrowing one you borrow a 10 from the next number that's higher up right so it's not really a 10 for this one, it's a 100 because this is the 100 position. So you're bringing a 1,000 over, but think of it as borrowing a factor of 10, right? So seven minus, you know, seven minus five, uh, five minus seven, you can't take seven away from five. So you borrow one from the two. So the two becomes a one and five becomes a 15. So borrowing one from the next number up means you're adding 10 to this one. So 15 minus seven is eight, and then you have a one here. So the answer is this doohickey right here. Okay, cool. So that's this one. Let's do this one, but subtraction, right? Let's go four. Let's go if it was two, five point seven, six minus seven, four point two, right? Again, it was subtracting you need to line up the decimals right i'll make the decimals bigger so you see them 
<laughs> they got to be pronounced, right? So you're going to line things up with the decimal, but the rule stands when you're subtracting numbers, when you're doing them this way. You put the bigger number up top and subtract the smaller number, even though we're going against or not against, but sort of manipulating our first mantra in mathematics, which is the sign in front of the number goes with the number, right? But this is a sort of a mental note that you're going to make because what you're going to remember is if this was 25 minus 74 then you're subtracting a bigger number from a smaller number your answer is going to be negative so automatically you should remember that your answer is going to be negative because you're taking away a bigger number from a smaller number right but we still want to make the bigger number digit wise anyway on the top so you're not going to write this as 25.76 plus 7 or minus 74.2. You're going to write this as 74.2 minus 25.76. Okay. Now remember, this is flip of what this is. So what we're going to keep a note of, mental note of, that whatever the answer is that we're going to get here is going to be negative, right? If you want smaller numbers, look at this. Let's assume we had here. That's four. Let's go five or an aside, right? If you had three plus five, that's an eight, right? If you have five plus three, that's an eight, right? Now, what if you had 3 minus 5 and what if you had 5 minus 3 well 5 minus 3 is just 2 we know that right but 3 minus 5 we should know this by now the answer is negative 2 but if you're going to do the subtraction like this which you need to do when you're dealing with bigger numbers you need to put the bigger number up top and subtract the bottom number and remember mental note that the bigger number was negative so your answer is going to be negative so what you're really doing is doing this you're going 5 minus 3 that's 2 but 2 is not the answer to this because the bigger number was the bigger number was negative so the answer is really negative 2 okay you make a mental note of it that's exactly the way you're going to treat this so if you're subtracting these you're lining up your decimal now remember anything after the last digit after the last decimal point right you can add a zero if you don't want to have an empty spot there right because what you're about to do is do this you're going to go six take six away from zero well you can't take six away from zero right zero minus six doesn't work because zero is zero zero is a smaller number is six so what you need to do is do exactly what we did here is go to the next number and borrow a 10 value right so 10 comes over 10 plus 0 is 10 so now you're going to go 10 minus 6 is 4 okay and then you go to the next number you go 7 mi 1 minus 7 well you can't take 7 away from 1 it doesn't work so you got to go to the next number and borrow 1 so you go to the 4 make this a three so you're always kicking it down by one the next number when you borrow it and then you're adding the 10 to one which makes it 11. so usually you're just adding a one right in front of whatever that number was there previously so 11 minus 7 is 4. put your decimal in place and then you're going to go 3 minus 5 well you can't take 5 away from 3. same problem right so what we need to do is borrow one from the seven and turn the three into 13. So if we take one away from seven, that becomes a six and this becomes a 13. 13 minus five is an eight. Six minus two is four. Now the question is, is 25.76 minus 74.2, 48.44? Well, it's not because this is the bigger number. This is negative 74.2. So we know the answer is negative. So that becomes your answer to this subtraction.
I went through this pretty fast, Arturo Dades, but the foundation, the 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 step by step process is there. Does this help you out? Does that make sense? Do you have any questions regarding this or anyone else for that matter? Because what I'm going to do is we're going to go through the Speedy Gonzalez to a certain degree, Speedy Gonzalez, right? We're doing the subtraction, we've done the addition, we're going to do multiplication, and we're going to do division. Okay, awesome on chart H. We're going to do division, and before we go into talking about how to move around an equal sign, we're going to do what the little segment that we need to do because all you need is addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division to be able to do personal finance investing to calculate return on investment. Crazy, right? Um, you do need exponents as well for compound, but we'll wait up on that. Okay. So I'm going to take this down. So that's subtraction. Let's talk about multiplication. Okay. Let's talk about multiplication. Now, the first thing you have to understand about multiplication is multiplication is an extension of addition, right? Or multiply the tops and bottoms with tens to remove decimals. Um, yes and no, right? If you have an equal sign, as long as you do it to both sides of the equation, you're okay with that, right? Because whatever you do on one side, you can do to the other side. But if you're simplifying, you can't just multiply the numbers by 10 because you're kicking up the numbers by magnitude of 10 right so you're not going to get the final answer right the legit answer by the way gangs i apologies about if i don't catch them thank you for the follows thank you for the subs if you're subbing and thank you for the follows uh when i'm not catching them. technically i'm multiplied by one It might be making it a little bit more difficult 10 over 10 sure uh, but it's extra step work that you need to do once you start doing and adding and subtracting with decimals and whatnot um, it just becomes routine right that extra step might help you out initially but in the long run you're going to eliminate it it's like having training wheels on a bike right once you learn how to ride a bike you know initially when you're learning you might have little training wheels where you're not you know you don't wobble over and hurt yourself when you're a little kid but once you learn how to ride a bike those training wheels really slow you down yeah i just like to do things in weird ways okay <laughs> waltz narwards so check this out let's do multiplication multiply multiply okay now look multiplication is an extension of addition one thing I keep on saying is mathematicians are some of the laziest people you meet in the world because they like to simplify things. They like to make things speedy Gonzalez so they don't have to spend too much time processing simple information. They want to move on to the more complicated stuff, right? So they've come up with shorthand and all this jazz, right? Slick, Mick, how are you doing? I feel like math is in my school was more about solving the problems and not learning why I was doing all, all this. Yeah, it's... Uh, it, it, they weren't even teaching you how to solve problems they're they're in general they're teaching you uh, just like a monkey you know a monkey see monkey do do this do this do this you get this and they don't even tell you to look at the final answer to say does that even make sense right which we will be doing which we will be doing right now take a look at this multiplication is an extension of addition so just imagine if you had this two plus two plus two plus two right what's four twos added together well, four, six, eight, that's eight, right? But a simpler way to do this is take your addition symbol, rotate it, right? Take your addition symbol, rotate it four to five degrees, you get a multiplication symbol, right? That's what multiplication is, the symbol represents. And what that means is you're, mul you're adding the same number multiple times, right? That's what the definition of multiplication is. So instead of writing two plus two plus two plus two is equal to eight, I can go two times four is equal to eight, which really means add two together four times, right? That's all it is, okay? That was my experience of that, right? Think of that, 
right? Multiplication is not something magic, something really necessarily novel that's been introduced in mathematics. It's just a faster way of doing addition, okay? As far as how to multiply, you do it this way. Let's assume, what was the last number we had? Two, five, I forget what it was. It was two, five, seven, four. No, there wasn't seven, four, seven, two, I think, or something else. Let's go three, two times seven, four, something, something, one, two, one, two, all right? No, that was too big. I think it was only three numbers we had, four, two, I believe, right? I'm pretty sure I got these two numbers wrong. Okay, now, if you have a three digit number multiply, sorry, four digit number multiplied by a three digit number, this is what you do, and this is the process that you do for any digit number multiplied by any digit number. And before we do this one, let me give you a quick little, and first of all, you need to you know your 10 by 10 multiplication table. So if you don't know it, learn it. Your 10 by 10 multiplication table, learn it. One, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four. Learn your 10 by 10 multiplication table. It will save yourself a lot of time, a lot of headache. Okay, really essential. If we're doing this type of multiplication, I'm assuming you know your multiplication table. And we have a full blown video out there, ASMR math video out there, talking about the multiplication table. It's like an hour long or 40 minutes long or something like this of how to, I, I don't even know if it's about memorization. It's basically putting it into your algorithm, your program to be able to know how to multiply, right? Seriously, I can't emphasize this enough. The first thing I tell all my students, learn your multiplication table, right? MI135, thank you very much for the Twitch Prime sub. Okay, really, gang, just go Chicho multiplication table. Okay, the video will pop up. Learn it, learn it, learn it. Okay, now just imagine if we're multiplying three, four digits with three digits. But before we do that, let's do two digits by one digit or two digits by two digits. So you see how the process works, all right? So here's question one, but let's do a simpler one first. Let's go, let's do question two first, all right? Let's assume we had two, five, three. Actually, let's go two digits. Two digits times two digits, all right? Math is good, but A plus B equals C is hard. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Kenny. Kenny Roberts, are you talking about Pythagorean theorem? Exponents kicks it up a notch, but we'll talk about it. Uh, if not in this live stream, in another live stream, if we're gonna build basic algebra as Uncharted Ace wants, uh, we'll get into exponents, maybe even in this in this one, right? So if we're multiplying, you line them up, line them up again on top of each other, just the same way you did addition, subtraction. But with multiplication, it really doesn't make a difference if the smaller number is up top or the bigger number up top. Ideally, though, put the bigger number up top, right? 25 times 12. Okay. With multiplication, what you do, you do this. You go this multiplies all the digits there, and that multiplies all the digits there. So 2 times 5 is 10. You put the 0 here, you put the 1 up top. If you get any number above nine, when you're multiplying two numbers together, the tenth value kicks up, right? Two times two is four, and then you add the top number, which makes it five, right? Now think about this. What's two times 25? It's 50, right? But you're doing it piecemeal. And then you move on to the next number, one, right? Now, if you're in this position, and by the way, with multiplication is ridiculous, and addition and subtraction, it's ridiculously important to line things up properly. Mathematics is about symmetry, really. Line things up properly. It, that's the way mathematics was developed, to be extremely visual. Any language is very visual, right? So someone, if someone asks you to spell the word apple, right, you're going to go, apple right that way that person can read it right if someone says write down the word apple you're not gonna go 
Apple. Because it's visually, that's extremely difficult for your mind to process. And we come up with languages to help help us to process things faster, to retain information, right? To be able to make connections. So you want to make it easier for your mind to be able to do things instead of harder for your mind to be able to do things, right? Keep this in mind. I've seen a lot of people do a lot of mathematics where they're extremely messy. It's the equivalent of writing Apple in that chaotic way. It's like, no, 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 no. First order of business, learn your multiplication table. Second order of business, tighten up your work, right? Line things up properly. When you line things up properly, we've already did the two multiplication. Now we've got to go to the one. And as before, this number multiplies that number and that number. But because this is in the tenth position, when you go one times five, you don't put it here, you put it here. And that's a five. And what people usually do, you add a zero here. Okay. Just to remember that you're starting in the second position right so 1 times 5 is 5 there is no carryover so this one is no longer there you have to make a mental note of that right and then 1 times 2 is 2 and then you draw the line and what did we say multiplication is really addition and the addition does come into play in multiplication here when you get down to this level you add these numbers 0 plus 0 is 0 5 plus 5 is 10 you put the 0 here carry the 1 and that's three so 25 times 12 is 300 okay let's do the bigger number two five three two times seven four two same process okay two times two is four two times three is six two times five is ten you put a zero and carry the one two times two is four add the one you get five is that cool the process is the same right i'm just doing a little bit faster right and then you move on to the four but this isn't really four in terms of value it was 40 it's in the 10th position so because we moved here you line this up when you multiply the four times two the result comes here but when you moved over one put a zero there put a place marker there so you know where you are right you don't want to when you're doing mathematics when you're doing algebra you want to reduce the amount of information you have to retain in your mind so i always say use the pen and paper as your assistant right make notes on the sides of whatever it is that you're doing if you need to remember where you are and what you need to do next right putting a zero as a place marker guarantees that you don't make a mistake to go four times two is eight and put the eight there because that's already taken right so four times two is eight you put the eight here four times three is twelve you put the two here and you carry the one four times five is twenty at the one you get twenty one and then you carry the two up top right because the one's gone right four times two is eight you add the two you get ten Cool. Now we're into the third number. Well, if we're into the third number, that lines up here. This and this are going to be zero. Okay. Then do your multiplication. Seven times two is fourteen. You put the four here. You carry the one. Seven times three is twenty-one. Add the one. You get twenty-two. You put two here and you carry the two up top. Seven times five is 35. Add two, you get 37. Seven and you carry a three. Seven times two is 14. Add the three, you get 17. And then what do you do with these numbers? Ideally, ideally, you lined everything up properly. Really, line everything up properly gang it's visual mathematics is visual people i've seen people do this when they're when they're doing this part they got five four here five zero six four and then they got zero eight two one zero one and then they got zero zero four two seven seven one 
how are you gonna add this? Like <laughs> really, how are you gonna add this? If you need to add these guys, it's the same numbers. You gotta go, okay, those guys add, those guys add, these guys add, these guys add, these guys add, these guys add, and that goes there. Man, that's a nasty way. Your mind just becomes confused, right? When you draw the lines, it's pretty straightforward. But you're not gonna sit there and draw lines to line things up all the time, right? What you need to do is line it up right off the get-go. 4 plus 0 plus 0 is 4. 6 plus 8 is 14, and that's a 0. It doesn't change anything. So 14, you put the 4, carry the 1. 1 plus 0 is 1, plus 2 is 3, plus 4 is 7. 5 plus 1 is 6, plus 2 is 8. 0 plus 7 is 7. 1 plus 7 is 8, and that's a 1. 2,532 times 742 is, you can put a little commas here if you want to be able to read it properly, 1,878,744, right? Easy peasy. Now, what if this had decimals? Let me take these off so we don't get them confused as decimals, right? What if this had decimals? Okay, what if this had decimals? Let's assume this guy had decimals. When you're multiplying numbers, you don't have to line up the decimals the way you did when you were adding numbers. When you're adding numbers, you need to line up the decimals to be able to add them. And subtracting, you need to line up the decimals when you're subtracting numbers, right? Remember, the bigger number always on top. Keep a mental note which number was negative. If the bigger number was negative, your answer is going to be negative. If the bigger number was positive, your answer is going to be positive, right? When you're subtracting numbers. So if you have decimals in your multiplication, you don't need to uh, line up your decimals. You just add the total number of decimals at the end and place them there. So for example, what if this was 2.5 times 1.2? So this was 2.5 times 1.2. They line up, but that doesn't matter to us because we're not lining up the decimals. What we do is we add the total number of decimal places we have. Now, this confuses some people. When I say you add the total number of decimal places you have, you're starting off at this location, the position where you're right beside the ones, right? And you're going, okay, if the decimal was there, that's one, that's two decimal spots. So you add two decimal spots. So 2.5 times 1.2 is 3.00, which is just three, right? Let's add the decimal spot. Instead of adding it here, let's add it here and here. So how many decimal spots do we have? If it's 0 0.25 times 0 0.12, we have one, two, three, four decimal spots, right? Well, over here, we multiply them without the decimals. We don't care, right? If we take these decimals away, right? And then we have four decimal spots. So we start off with the decimal is, is an invisible decimal. And then we go one, two, three. We don't have any more numbers, but we do another jump. We put the decimal there. If we have any blank spots, we put zeros. Okay, so 0.25 times 0.12 is 0 0.03. And you don't need these two decimal spots there because zeros after the last digit in a decimal is unnecessary, right? So let's add decimals here. Let's assume this was 2.532 times 7.4 right so we don't need to redo our multiplication we don't because we didn't have to line up the decimals right if we're lining these up if we're adding then this would have been 2.532 plus 7.42 you line them up right but that's not what we're doing we're multiplying if we're multiplying, we add the num we multiply the numbers as if there was no decimal. And then we count the number of decimal places we have total. Let's check it out. One, two, 
three, four, five decimal spots, right? So we start off where the decimal place is. So we go one, two, three, four, five. Two point five three two times seven point four two is eighteen point seven eight seven four four. Is that clear? Does that work? I hope so. Does that work on charter days? And anybody else? Any questions regarding this? Yes. That is a massive help. Awesome on charter days. Thank you very much for the uh, follows gang square 1996. And those are some other follows that popped through, but I didn't want to break the train of thought on there. So appreciate the follows gang. Let's go to dividing. Once we do dividing, we're going to go to return on investment in personal finance. So we can set up our work that we're going to do when we talk about investing in comic books in four days. <laughs> nice. Let's do division. Let's do division. Very nice. Division is just an extension of multiplication, which is an extension of addition. So they teach you, everyone, I, they even taught me. This is the way they taught me. They said, this is addition, this is subtraction, this is multiplication, and this is division. What they didn't tell you was, all of these things are really just addition. Right. Subtraction is just adding negative numbers. Right. Multiplication is just multiplying, adding mul the same number multiple times. And division is the flip of multiplication. Right. You're... Because for everything you can do in mathematics, you can undo almost. Okay, that's not the way it works in the in in the physical world, right? Try to break a glass cup, right? Very difficult to put it back together, right? For everything that is done in the material world, you can't necessarily undo. In mathematics, it's beautiful. You can almost undo everything that you did. I have forgot everything in mathematics almost <laughs> micro micro twist I was good once upon a time I'm horrible a uh, brother or sister or micro twist one of the reasons I got into teaching tutoring mathematics was because I was very disappointed that I forgot a lot of mathematics that I had already learned so I got into teaching mathematics uh, as a hobby to relearn my high school mathematics because I really didn't want the I really didn't want to lose that power that I had it's like practicing a natural language that you might know if you speak more than one or two languages right you need to practice it to retain the ability to speak it so I got into tutoring mathematics to make sure I don't forget how to do my mathematics because I knew it was ridiculously important in the real world right crafter how are you doing welcome welcome now let's do division 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 Jean. division division my spelling sucks right now I go through periods where my spelling is good and my spelling is bad woke J lad woke woko woko how are you doing division let's assume we have the following and by the way gang division is really just about fractions right but what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna teach you long division okay because fractions when we get into fractions we're gonna talk about prime numbers and prime numbers we're gonna do in another step I just want to teach you the process of long division right now and the reason I want to teach you this is because a lot of people say oh you don't need to learn long division and a lot of a lot of teachers actually you don't need to a lot of math a lot of people that do it you don't need to learn math uh, long division I'm like dude learn long division it's an exercise for the mind it's good for the brain it's like doing pull-ups and chin-ups okay I had been uh, 
Microtos, I had been talking shit all the semester till one month before summer break, and my teacher said, I can't let you pass. You haven't done anything. Okay, I said, if I do the entire book and pass all the tests, will I pass? Yes, he said. I finished the entire mathematics A book in one month and pass all the tests. Yeah. And if you're in school and if you've been through school, you know that they take 10 months to teach you some things in the earlier years, things that, especially in mathematics, right, uh, that you could probably do in a month, right? In grade 12, it, they take you, they take about 10 months to teach you something that you could learn in about two months. Okay, so if you bunker down, and you know, there's pluses and minuses of going to school, there's social activity, this, that, 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 all that jazz. But if you want to go through schooling, education your basic education speedy gonzalez style just to teach yourself educate yourself you can go and challenge tests and get stuff done right and gang don't forget free assange free assange free assange julian assange is a publisher and journalist that is being crucified for trying to bring transparency and accountability of capitalist power to humanity for more information see wikileaks.org or check out our julian assange and wikileaks playlist on sensor tube Let's do long division. Let's assume we had this two five three two over seven four two. We wanted to divide these two numbers. Okay, and I'm going to do the basic long division right now. We're not going to go into the the other uh, more intricate stuff that can happen. Is because as long as you got the basic long division down, your money, right, your gold. If you're going to do this, the way you lay it out, and again, mathematics is very visual, lay it out. And I sh actually, I should do a simpler number first, by the way. Let me do a simpler number first. Let's assume, so this is one. Let's do question two first. What did we have before? Uh, 12, I want to do 2, 5, 3 divided by uh, 4. Let's do that. Okay. So 253 divided by 4. This is the way you lay it out. You draw your little, what are you gonna call this? Laying down L with the pointer sticking down, right? You put the four on here. You put the two, five, three here, okay? Give yourself enough room. And when you're laying down the work, again, talking about Apple, if you're gonna write the word Apple, right? You're going to write it like this. You're not going to go, forget about the chaotic letters all over the place. You're not going to go like this. Right? That's just hard to work with. Apple, right? Be consistent in the spacing of the letters you put down. Be consistent in the spacing of the numbers you put down. So you give yourself enough room to maneuver, right? You want to be able to do things in there. You don't want your numbers to be staggering at different lengths and different spaces, right? You don't want to go two, five, three, two. You don't want to write 2,532 like this. It just doesn't, because when you're trying to even add, what are you going to do? You're going to put your seven here and four and two here. But why would you do that, right? Be consistent. Make it easier for yourself, right? This is how you do long division. You look at this number and you're dividing this into this whole thing. So you look at the first number, you go four, the, does four go into two? Does four go into two? Four is bigger than two, so it doesn't go into two. So if it doesn't go into two, you can put a zero there, but you don't need to. You just go to the next number and you put those numbers, two numbers together, and you treat that as a 25. And you ask yourself, how many times does 4 go into 25, right? Six times. So what you do is you put your 6 above the 5 because you're using these two numbers, right? So how many times does 4 go into 25? Six times because 6 times 4 is 24. So what you do as soon as you put a number up top, you bring this guy and you multiply these two numbers and you put the number there. Okay. And what you're going to do now is subtract this number from that number. So minus five minus four is one and two minus two is zero. And you don't have to put the zero down. 
And then what you're going to do is you bring the three down. So as soon as you get down to this number, if this number is bigger than that number, you did something wrong. You didn't take this one high enough, right? Let me show you how that works just before we move on anymore. I'll put those numbers back up again, right? Let's assume you didn't know your multiplication table, right? And you ask yourself, how many times does four go into 25? And you went, oh, five times, right? Again, learn your multiplication table and make your life easier, right? Let's assume you didn't know your multiplication table. You ask yourself, how many times does four go into 25? Five times, right? You go five. Five times four is 20. You put the 20 here and then you subtract these. Five minus zero is five. Two minus two is zero. You got a five here, but four still goes into five. So you have no need to bring down another number. So you just broke division, right? You don't, you can't proceed here because that number is bigger than that. So what are you going to do? You can't go, oh, four goes into five once. But where are you going to put the one? You're still in this position. You haven't gone to the next one. So now you got to go plus one here. So that makes it six and then four and then one. And then you can bring the three down. And then this is now six. Oh, confusing, confusing, confusing. You got to take it to the max right off the bat, right? Know your multiplication table. How many times does 4 go into 25? 6 times. 6 times 4 is 24. Subtract. 5 minus 4 is 1. 2 minus 2 is 0. 4 doesn't go into 1. That means we got as close as we could go without going over 25. And you can't go over this number, right? Now you need to borrow a number. Bring the 3 down. 4 goes into 13 how many times? 4 goes into 13 three times right three times four is 12 cool right you subtract these numbers three minus two is one zero one minus one is zero you're done you don't have any more numbers here so this is what you could write down right now you could write down two five oops two five three two th 253 divided by 4 is equal to 63 and the remainder is 1 some people write it like this with the remainder of 1 that's when they're just teaching you at the beginning stages yo Graham how you doing that's at the beginning stages of learning division you learn this in the first few weeks a couple of months and then you don't do R1 again right or you can go at 63 and 1 is left over 1 divided by 4 so 253 divided by 4 is 63 and a quarter which basically means dot biver how you doing which basically means 4 goes into 253 63 and a quarter times now if you want to represent this as a decimal this is what you do you come to here you go up here and you say okay i got no more numbers that i can bring down poop right there's something we can do though we can take we can put a decimal here and as soon as we put a decimal there it's sort of like putting a decimal here right and as soon as you got a decimal there you can just add a zero because a zero after a decimal really doesn't change anything right so there's a decimal here now you can bring the zero down four goes into ten twice so you can put your two up there four times two is eight you subtract you get a two well four doesn't go into two but we already placed our decimal and if we're in a decimal position right then you can add one zero for every time you reach the spot the bottom part okay so you can only do it once per rotation when you hit here right so the zero comes down and you ask yourself how many times does four go into 20 
Well, 4 goes into 25 times. 5 times 4 is 20. You put your 20 there, you subtract, you get 0. Once you get 0, that was it. This thing went out of focus. Let's see if it'll come back. It came back. If you want, here, let me do this. Let me write this clear so you see the process. Right? So we're at 20. 5 times 4 is 20. Subtract, you get 0. Once you get 0, that's as far as you got. You've gone. You don't need to go anymore. So 253 divided by 4 was 63 with a remainder of 1. That's where if we stopped at this position. Or 63 and 1 over 4. Or 63.25. Okay. That's what it is. Now, let's go do this. Any questions about this, by the way? On Charter Days or anyone else? If not, we're going to do the long division for this. Let's check this out. 7, 4, 2. And we're going to divide that into 2, 5, 3, 2. Okay. More difficult. More difficult division, no doubt. Right? But you're going to ask yourself, how many times does 742 go into 2? Well, it doesn't. Go into 3? Uh, go into 25? It doesn't. Go into... 253 a dozen 742 is bigger than 253 so you got to go all the way in all the numbers right how many times does 742 go into 2532 you can do approximations right now forget about the 32 just call this 2500 you want to get close but without going over you can call this 750 how many times does 750 go into 2500 right because if you're kicking this down by 32 and kicking this up you might go over but at least you're gonna get close right three times let's check it out so laugh out loud Tony says three times how many 742s are there in 2532 laugh out loud laugh out, laugh out loud Tony says the three so we're using all of these numbers so the three we're going to put on top of here and we're going to multiply three by this three times two is six three times four is twelve two and a one remember this is like doing multiplication but on top of each other right seven four three uh, seven four two times three three times two is six three times four is twelve one three times seven is twenty one twenty two so this is two and two, right? Now, just for the exercise of it, just for the exercise. Now, I'm not gonna do the multiplication like this anymore. We're just gonna do it here. Let's assume you went over, right? You picked too big of a number, right? Let's kill this for a second. Let's assume you picked too big of a number. Let's assume you picked four. 4 times 2 is 8, 4 times 4 is 16, you bring the 1 over, 4 times 7 is 28, plus 1 is 29. And then you've got to subtract this, but wait a second, 2,968 is bigger than 2,532. You're not going to do that. It's too big of a number. You, It's like price is right. You went over. Oops. Right? So if you went over, depending on how much you went over by, you might have gone over by a lot in this case we only went over by one so we're going to kick it down to three right and if you go down to two right if you if you thought it was twice then the number when you subtract it was going to be bigger than this number and then that doesn't work because we already talked about it right so it's three three times two is six three times four is twelve and a one three times 7 is 21 plus 1 is 22 subtract now you're doing subtraction 2 minus 6 well you can't take 6 away from 2 so you borrow 1 from the 3 turn the 3 into a 2 oops into a 2 that's another reason you're going to give yourself space right because you're going to be doing things inside here 
So that's a 2. And the 12, 2 becomes a 12. 12 minus 6 is 6. 2 minus 2 is 0. 5 minus 2 is 3. And 2 minus 2 is 0. So we're out of numbers, right? This doesn't go into that, rightfully so. So right now we could write our answer like this. 2, 5, 3, 2 divided by 7, 4, 2 is equal to 3. And because we don't have any more numbers to bring down, 306 over 742. Okay, and you can reduce this fraction, by the way. And we could have reduced that fraction as well, but we're not dealing with the reducing fractions yet until we get into fractions of prime numbers, right? So that's one answer. And again, you can reduce that fraction. Two goes into both of them, probably more. Now, what if you want it as a decimal? Right? As a decimal, we don't have any more numbers to bring down. So we're going to put a decimal here, and we're going to add a zero here so we can bring it down. Right. Now you ask yourself, how many times does 742 go into 3060? Well, we already multiplied it by 4. So we know that came out to 29,000 something or 2,900 something. So we know it's going to be 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 4 times 4 is 16. Bring the 1 up. 4 times 7 is 28 plus 2 is 29. 0 minus 8, it doesn't work. Convert this to a 5, make that a 10. 10 minus 8 is 2. 5 minus 6, it doesn't work. you got to borrow 1 from the 0, but you can't borrow 1 from a 0. 0 doesn't have anything to give you, right? you got to go to the next one. So you're going to borrow 1 from the 3. 3 becomes a 2, gives 1 to the 0. 0 becomes a 10. Well, now you can borrow from the 10 to kick the 5 into 15. So 10 becomes a 9, and the 5 becomes a 15. 15 minus 6 is 9. 9 minus 9 is 0. 2 minus 2 is 0. But you don't need the 0 and the 0. It just confuses things, right? Whoop! Take it out. Take it out. Right? Well, we did it right because 742 doesn't go into 92. Okay? We're on this side of the decimal location, right? So that means... We can add a zero. How many times does 742 go into, oh, add the zero here, 920 once? Dolphin, how are you doing? You're going to put a one here. One times that is just 742. Again, you're subtracting. Two, zero minus two doesn't work. Borrow one from here. This becomes a 10. 10 minus two is eight. Four, 1 minus 4 doesn't work. You borrow 1 from the 9. 9 becomes an 8. 1 becomes an 11. 11 minus 4 is 7. 8 minus 7 is 1. Cool. 178. What do we do? Borrow another 0. Add another 0. How many times does 742 go into 1, 7, 8, 0? Twice. We put a 2 here. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 4 is 8. 2 times 7 is 14. Subtract. You can't take 4 from 0. You borrow 1 from the 7. This becomes a 10. 10 minus 4 is 6. This is a 7. 7 minus 8 doesn't work. You borrow 1 from the 7. 7 becomes a 17. 17 minus 8 is 9. 6 minus 2 is... 6 minus 4 is 2. 2, 9, 6. Cool. Should we continue? You can borrow another zero. Zero. Oh, so close. Look at this. 2,960. This is 2,968. Well, we know it can't be four because four will be too high. Right? So how many times does 742 go into 2,960? Three times. Right? Three. Let me put a barrier here. Three times that is the same thing as this. Two, 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 six. Subtract. Six becomes a five. That becomes a ten. Four, three, seven. 
Oh, so close, no cigar, right? And so on, right out of room, right? And you can do this until you find a pattern, right? Or if they say, hey, they want the answer to this to two decimal places. If they want the answer to this, you put a little approximation sign, you go 3.4, two decimal places. If you go to round to two decimal places, you go to the one afterwards. If that number is five or more, you round up, round the one to two, but it's not, it's two. Four or less, that remains the same. That's the decimal version of that. Okay. Does that work? I hope that's clear. I understand it, but we'll need to practice it. Yeah, with long division, it takes practice because it inc incorporates everything, right? You're doing multiplication and you're doing subtraction, which is really addition, right? Square 1996. The unique thing why I love math is answer is always same, but the path is different to achieve it. That's where the fun is, yeah. Uh, a Vedic math freak, are you? <laughs> nice. And there are multiple ways to get to the same answer, and multiple ways you can you can manipulate numbers to give you a certain perspective on a certain situation, which shines a light on certain things. And we're going to talk about this tomorrow, by the way, gang. 